So you've had enough of the whole work thing, or you want to reduce your work and uh, file for retirement early from the Social Security Administration. All right, let's talk about that today. Uh, my name is Ed Weir. I'm a former manager of the Social Security Administration. I've uh, helped hundreds of thousands of people throughout the country with all things retirement, and disability, uh, Medicare, survivor benefits, spousal benefits. Uh, give me a call and we can walk through everything with you. Make sure you're making the right decision at the right time. Go through all my videos. I've got uh, close to 200 videos going on here and uh, all aspects of Social Security and Medicare and federal benefits. All right. So you're going to stop working or reduce your hours. Okay. So the early retirement age for Social Security is 62. If you're looking at survivor benefits, it's 60. So if you're a survivor, you can collect your benefits at 60 years old. If you are what is called a DWIB in Social Security, a disabled widow's benefits, you can actually collect your benefits at 50 years old. But that's a disability, so we won't get too much into detail there. We'll just stick with regular uh, early retirement at 62 years old. As I'm sure you know, um, Social Security in the 80s started to increase the full retirement age. So first thing um, is the annual earnings limit. When you retire early, there's a limit to the amount of money you can make. And for 2023, that's $21,240. Um, I get calls every single day, um, walking people through the entire process in their particular situation. And they always say, well, I already made that. I made that already this year. So I guess I can't retire this year. No, nope, that's not true. You could make, say it's July, you can make a million dollars up until June. So from January until June, you made a million dollars. But starting July, you are going to be under the monthly earnings limit. So the first year you retire, Social Security can switch it to a monthly limit. Okay. So $21,240 divided by 12 months. So next year, whatever the yearly limit is, you just divide it by 12. And as long as you stay under that amount going forward, once you start collecting your social security checks, then you're good. Nothing will be withheld. If you go over, obviously $1 for every $2 will be withheld from your social security benefits. And unfortunately what happens, um, this is based on uh, decades of inside experience, little tips, tricks, and secrets here is uh, when people file, they file online and um, they don't do that part correctly or they even uh, call Social Security and a claim specialist takes their claim and they don't code it correctly. And what happens sometime, I get calls every day about this too, is um, somebody retires early in July and they made a million dollars and starting July, they only made $1,500 a month. And so they're good. They have, you know, nothing will be withheld, but for whatever reason, they did their internet application incorrectly or the, the claim specialist coded it incorrectly. And the computer picked up that you made, you know, a million and however much dollars and they send you a nasty little overpayment letter that says, pay us back all this money. Um, that's unfortunately a, a common occurrence, but that's a uh, really easy to fix. All you have to do is contact social security and uh, do a kind of a work report and say, uh, yeah, your, your numbers are correct. Uh, your numbers are incorrect. Um, starting July, I earned under $1,500. Here's my pay stubs. And they'll just go ahead and social security would just, you know, negate the overpayment. If you do have some of an overpayment, uh, you know, give me a call and I can uh, walk you through the entire process on how to get that addressed. Okay. So if um, you start your benefits in July and you switch to the monthly tests, so you're under, you know, the, that amount, you're good for the rest of the year. And the following year, there is no monthly test. You have to go to the annual. So if next year it's 22,000, you make sure you stay under 22,000. Again, if you go over that, they withhold $1 for every $2 you go over. Okay. All right. Um, what about if you decide you want to go back to work, you want to go back to work, your boss says, you know, Hey, we really miss you. Can you come back? We'll pay you, you know, 10 times what we were paying you before. Um, no problem. Take the job. You know, if, if that's what your choice is, 
And then you call Social Security Administration and said, yeah, I'm going to go way over my 21000 or 22000 or whatever it is. And they can essentially suspend your benefits, stop your benefits, and because they would rather do that than overpay you. So you just call up and say, yep, um, I'm going to make way over. Go ahead and stop my benefits. And when you hit your full retirement age, then you can call up and, you know, start them again. But if you decide, okay, um, your full retirement age, you know, 66 and eight months or 67 or whatever the case may be, you want to go ahead and turn your benefits back on again. You just call the Social Security Administration and say, yep, I want my money now. And they will recalculate everything. So for instance, if you filed at 62, and so that's, you know, however many months, 36 months or what, let's say, make it easy, 36 months early. So your benefit amount, your monthly benefit amount is reduced by 36 months. So anytime you take money early from the Social Security Administration, they reduce it. If you wait and show your full retirement age, it's the full amount. But if you took your benefits at 36 months, 36 months early, but then after a year, you went back to work, your benefit is not going to be reduced by, by 36 months. When you hit your full retirement age, Social Security will automatically recalculate it. And you'll say, hey, turn my money back on. And they'll do that. And you'll only be reduced for 12 months because that are, that's the only checks you actually received. And that's automatic. Sometimes it takes a little long for the system to go out. Sometimes they pay part of it this year and part of it. But you'll be uh, reimbursed for those 24 months that you actually didn't take the, uh, the benefits. Okay. All right. So uh, what else? Health insurance. If you're losing your health insurance because you're going to part-time or you're stopping working or something. Um, you've got the Affordable Care Act, also called the Marketplace, also called Obamacare. Um, so you have those options because your Medicare won't start until you're 65 years old. So it's important that you have health insurance. So give me a call. Um, we can help you uh, um, find a plan in your particular area, get you all enrolled and everything, no problem. So once you get 65 years old, if you're already receiving Social Security benefits, the monthly benefits, then Medicare will start automatically. About three months before you turn 65, Medicare will send you your red, white, and blue card, your Part A and Part B. If you're currently working at that time, you just re, you know say, I, I don't want the B, you return the card. Um, but if you want to keep both of them, then the, the premium, the Part B premium will come out of your Social Security check automatically. And once you reach Medicare age, then if you currently have the Affordable Care Act, Marketplace, health insurance, that essentially will stop. It can continue, but you won't receive any premium discounts, uh, the tax credits or cost sharing or anything like that. So um, it's best to go ahead and switch from the, uh, the, the marketplace health insurance to a Medicare plan because after all, you are paying for the Part B anyway. Um, you did pay into Medicare all those decades. So definitely take advantage of it. And at that time, um, so two or three months before your Medicare starts, again, reach out. In terms of survivor benefits, if you're 62 years old, um, a lot of variables there with previous uh, spouses. Um, also your current spouse, if you're currently uh, retiring early, you definitely need to calculate whether it's good for one spouse to go ahead and collect and the other one to go ahead and delay. What a lot of people don't realize is that the spouse that made the most money, um, that's the benefit that the survivor will receive. And that may or may not include, depending on your choice, delayed retirement credits. So it's all rather confusing and there's so many different variables and each situation is unique. As I always say, uh, in all my videos, there's exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions with Social Security and Medicare. So uh, you really need someone with decades of experience to walk you through the entire process. So give me a call, uh, email me, and we can uh, set up a time to make sure uh, you're making the right decision. And I can uh, walk you through the entire process, make sure you receive everything you're entitled to from Social Security and Medicare.
And as I always say in almost all my videos, um, there are a lot of people out there on YouTube, uh, Medicare insurance agents that claim to be Social Security experts, um, and uh, not necessarily so. So make sure uh, when you make your Social Security decision that you contact someone at Social Security that uh, knows what they're talking about, or again, reach out to me and uh, I can use my decades of insight, experience, and expertise to help you make the right decision. All right. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to you soon.